Invasive species are everybody's favorite whipping boy for the problems in the Delta. Um, and they are a serious problem, but there is much a symptom of the changing Delta as they are a cause. Uh, for example, the a major problem in the Delta today is Egeria densa, Brazilian waterweed, which clogs up the channels and it creates great habitat for a lot of the fish that I would call undesirable, things like largemouth bass and uh, bluegill. Egeria densa is abundant in the Delta because we've made it into such a a, a sort of a stagnant freshwater system right, where we're moving water, fresh water continually across the delta and not letting the tides work their magic to create an environment that's uh, hostile to that plant. When scientists look at the delta's problems, the pollution, the invasive species, even climate change, it seems that all of those issues are way down the list. Coming in at number one on our hit parade of delta troubles, is the one thing that we can actually do something about. Because the consensus is that the biggest problem is the fresh water flowing into the system. What's wrong? Fresh water is moving more across the surface and less up and down, which confuses the fish. So the delta is now less of an estuary and more like a lake. Between water being diverted before it gets to the delta and fresh water being pumped south for Central Valley agriculture, the system is broken. What's, go, what's been going on is you increase the amount of water being diverted, you change the uh, hydrology of the system. The single biggest shift in the system was the increase in pumping from the state and federal pump, pumping plants. So they just sort of incrementally started increasing the amount of water being removed from the system. The overall amount of fresh water that flows from the delta into the estuary has been reduced by as much as 50% in many years. Uh, that is a substantial reduction in freshwater flow, which has large consequences for habitat and ecosystems in the estuary. Water diversions and pumping are at the heart of the debate over the use of water in California. This is the pumping station run by the federal government, and there is another similar system operated by the state. The biggest share of the water moving through here is for corporate industrial agriculture growing crops on problem toxic soil. The loudest voice in the struggle over water comes from the Westlands Water District. It's about 1,000 square miles. That's bigger than the state of Rhode Island. Most of the farmland that Westlands irrigates has the same poisonous toxin, selenium, that caused these horribly deformed birds at the Kesterson National Wildlife Refuge in the mid-1980s. Their website says that they serve about 600 family-owned farms but the number of families actually farming has been estimated at only 130 to 350. It just depends on how one chooses to define the word farmer. And while it's true that there are actually a few small family farms within the district, the vast majority of the land serviced is run by giant agriculture, who like to use the term family farms, truly a bastardization of an iconic term. For example, Westland spokesperson Sarah Wolf is a member of a so-called family farming dynasty on over 25,000 acres of land. Westlands is doing everything they can, from PR stunts to working on their political friends to find ways to increase the amount of water they can take from the Delta. And despite multiple scientific studies regarding the collapse of the Delta smelt and salmon, they go out of their way to deny or trivialize the cause of the problem, excessive water diversions. Um, thank you for the introduction, and uh, I, I will watch the clock and stay on track here. Listen to how Westlands dismisses the science that they wish would just go away. Speaking at a forum presented by the Competitive Enterprise Institute about California's problems is Westlands Chief Deputy General Manager, who previously was a part of the Bush administration's Department of Interior, the agency responsible for regulating water deliveries. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, we have problems. We have fish that have declined um, for who knows what reasons. We've spent about 20 to 30 million dollars a year studying the delta and monitoring the fish, trying to understand them. Uh, we don't understand them, but we do have regulators who like to shut the pumping plants down. We intend to file another lawsuit. You have wealthy individuals that uh, have purchased marginal lands of little value uh, uh, without water, then use their, uh, their influence to, to secure access to water, uh, and it becomes more valuable. I feel sorry for 
people in the South Valley that have mortgaged their futures under the belief that they, ha they have rights to water when, when those um, contracts and the actual rights are, are predicated on surplus water uh, that can only be uh, delivered in the wettest of years. Uh, and yet, you know, they have tried to firm up those, those, those rights to, to demand that water even when it's not available. Farmers in the Delta understand the need for water, but wonder aloud about the increasing demands of farmers on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley. As a farmer, you don't ever want to see uh, another farmer hurting, wanting for water. I, I think it's just a shame that we see the conversation continually framed as a um, man versus fish battle. I think it's funny to uh, consider the fact that they want to refer to their current situation as a Congress congressionally created dust bowl when it was an act of Congress that uh, gave them the ability to farm down there in the first place, you know, the, the construction of the Central Valley Project. Prior to 1960, that was desert down there. Only with the application of Delta water did it become an agricultural area. So it's not fish against people. That area needs to recognize that they can't expect quantities of water that they've gotten. We in the Delta understand that there is going to be exports of water, but let's try to keep it realistic. Preventing further harm to the Delta and restoring it back to health is critical to those who depend on it, wildlife and people. After all, no one wants salmon to become extinct but that journey back from the precipice is difficult. A salmon are a little more complex than Delta smelt because they also depend on upstream areas. I think salmon actually is a remarkably resilient species. We do know what we need to do. First off, you have to improve flows in the upper rivers, creating better flow regimes for the fish, making sure we have more cold water. We need to reduce the numbers of salmon that we kill in water diversions. We need to improve overall conditions so their survival improves. If we do, probably of all the species, salmon are the most resilient, and I believe that they will be able to come back. We, we do need salmon water now. Those salmon need that water. They need the delta to become healthy again, to be able to not only allow the fish in for spawning, but the fingerlings out to the sea. We need salmon water now. We need water now, and that includes salmon water. Agriculture can live within those parameters. We have a state constitution that prohibits the unreasonable use and, and method of diversion of water. We have a, um, a water code that in excruciating detail sets forth how we allocate and reallocate water. We have state and federal endangered species acts. Had these laws been in, complied with, had they been enforced, the Delta would not now be in collapse. I think the evidence is absolutely incontrovertible that California has been living beyond its water means. We have been over-exploiting our water resources, and the way we have been managing them is inherently unsustainable. We cannot keep doing what we've been doing. We need to be smarter. We need to pay attention to the laws on the books and the laws of nature. Otherwise, we lose the delta, the salmon, and a big part of our souls. And one more thing. That $11.1 billion water bond that voters are being urged to pass in November? Say no. If it passes, it will open the door to building more ways to divert water away from the Delta. The safe, clean, and reliable water bond needs to be defeated. Otherwise, the Delta, the Salmon, and California's fiscal health will continue to decline. Share this video with your family, friends, and coworkers. It's time to make what is wrong right again. Salmon water, now.